in uh, on the live stream to participate with us. We covet your prayers earnestly because we're praying for the body of Christ wherever she is in the earth until we be gathered together into one. Our first request comes from Galatians 6 and verse 4 where it is written, but let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Our prayers that all believers would prove their own work and realize the joy of the Lord. Prove your own work. Test your own work. Examine your own work. Uh, you know, whenever uh, something is made, this is a laboratory type thing, but they test it for its purity. And they test it. To, to make sure you, if it's industry, they, they test things to make sure they work the way they're supposed to and that the tinsel of it is right, that it's going to hold up to the purposed use of it and stuff. Well, we're to prove our own work. We're to test it. We're to examine our own selves. Uh, we examine our motives. We examine uh, what we're bring, putting into it. We examine the manner in which it's done. And then we will have joy in our own selves. We will know the satisfaction of the fellowship that God has with us as we serve him with all our mind and all our strength. And we will, and with all our heart. That's what we need to examine. We won't be doing empty or hollow or pointless works if we are doing this, if we are testing or proving our own works and then it won't make any difference of course we do desire that uh, somebody said once <clears throat> not only do you have to do well you have to seen be seen doing well well see that's where God gets the glory is when they see our good works yes. and then when they glorify our father in heaven but if this is fulfilled in us we will know that what we're doing is what is acceptable unto the Lord. And so let's just say we're around those that don't have the capacity to make a right judgment of our works. We still are not cast down then because we know that our works are wrought in God and that they were, they were done in a manner that God approves. And then we will have joy in ourselves. We can still anticipate giving an account of that that deed or that word or whatever it was in, in the day in which the hearts and deeds and words of men are judged. So we want that blessing for all believers. This is a matter of confidence before God and a matter of knowing that we're walking with him, knowing that we're, we're approved of him even now as we labor for him. So who will Remember that before the Lord, that all believers would prove their own work and realize that means that they participate in and, and know that they are participating in the joy of the Lord. Brother Jeremy. All right. Oh, sorry. Brother Levi, thank you. Excellent. Excellent. For those on live stream... After all the prayers, Brother Jeremy just uh, testified that he's feeling much better. Uh, we're going next to Romans. We'll be in chapter 12 and verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Our prayers that we would all think of ourselves according to our measure of faith. Our measure of faith uh, is is actually demonstrated, whether you, whether you know a person realizes that or not. There, the the scriptures talk about the different works of faith. Now, there's a sense in which we all have some some entrance into these things. For example. Uh, those that there's a, a a gift of faith where you're given exceptional faith for something yeah. you just you just know it you and it's based in in scripture and in your knowledge of god but this isn't like just every day you don't just wake up yeah. with that uh -huh. and it doesn't mean that that's 
what that person has all the time, but it's that measure at that time. You may have, your measure of faith may be for the proclamation of the gospel. Your measure of faith may be for uh, an unusual gift of helps or, you know, it, uh, the, mul the multifarious, the multiplicity of the expressions of God's grace are distributed and we, we dis uh, display them through our measure of faith. And if we don't believe, we're not going to get any of these things. A person without faith doesn't get grace. And this is the grace that we're talking about that's operative in the body of Christ. So, so the, we're praying that we would all think of ourselves according to our measure. You have to be in tune with. You have to be, you have to be aware of what God is doing. He's not going to come. He, there are no spiritual two-by-fours that God goes, goes hitting people to get their attention. He, he has ways of getting our attention. But that's not the way he operates. The Spirit of God, remember, he is very sensitive. We're told not to vex him, not to quench him, not to resist him, not to grieve him. Yeah. Now, does that sound like, like someone that's just going to come and bulldoze you over? No. God is worthy. He, we're made in his image. Amen. And... We are given a sensitivity. Sensitivity isn't, isn't uh, wimpy. It's, it's not, well, it's not what people would call a, uh, a, a girly or a feminine thing. Uh, it, it takes strength to be sensitive toward God. It takes, it, it takes determination to crowd out the things that would quench or vex or grieve the spirit to choose him instead of other things. So to think of ourselves according to our measure of faith means to be very in tune with what, we, what God has revealed of himself to us and to press in in those areas and be guided by him. If we, if we don't do this, we'll find ourselves operating outside of going beyond or falling short of the grace of God operating in us. That might not sound too bad to a lot of people, but brethren, we walk by faith. That means in those areas, we're not walking as we ought to walk before the Lord. When we pray these things, there is nothing in the scripture that we are exhorted or taught or uh, commanded that that isn't something important about God that he's using to conform us to the image of his son. Jesus was very strong. Even his enemies would have called him, uh, well, he, to, to those who tried to, to banter with him or to overcome him with words, they found him uh, someone that could not be resisted. Yeah. He overcame in every opposition, even in his crucifixion, he was he was strong to do the will of God. His his weakness was stronger than than the uh, strength of Satan. And he it, he operated believing that the Father would do all that he had he had promised to do in him, that he would keep him, and that he could do what the Father said, and the Father would be faithful even unto death. So these, this uh, measure of faith we're talking about, this is the daily, this is the continuing operation Amen. of the grace of God in us by faith, day by day. It may not be the exact same day by day as far as it's working out, but it'll all be according to the measure, and God meets that measure according to your faith and according to his purpose for you. So there may be times when you're very, very strong in something and you don't want to draw back from that and say, yesterday I wasn't like that, so I can't be like that today. And then you don't want to go beyond on another time and presume upon it, but to be walking with God and to judge yourself and to be sensitive to God and that we would all think of ourselves according to the measure of faith that God has given to us. 
So who will lead us in that request? Brother Ricky and Brother Jean. All right. And then finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And our final request is that more professing Christians would experience being a purposeful and cheerful giver. Well, I can, I can think of two things that would cause a person to not be a cheerful giver. One is, if uh, they don't love what they're giving to, or for, and two, if they think more of their uses for things than God's uses for things. Uh, it is written in the scriptures that God gives us power to get wealth. Everything we are and everything we have really has been given to us. Amen. Now, there are people who have difficulty with just like tithing. Tithing is giving to the Lord. Whenever, whenever the uh, tithe was given, it was given to the priests, and then the priests were required to tithe. So, and everyone was involved in it. It wasn't some people did and some people, no, no, none of the priests, not even the high priest, said, well, I work for God all the time, and um, they're supposed to bring the, the, the stuff into the, the temple, and I live by that, so really it's, it's mine. I'll just, I'll just use it myself. No, even the priests, they gave their tenth unto the Lord also. Why? Why? Because this disciplines the flesh, for one thing. This is an outward and a very real, tangible expression of our, our knowledge that God is the giver of all things yeah. Amen. and that it really belongs to him. Amen. Amen. Now, it really does, brethren. Yeah. To, to, uh, every man to their own master, they stand or fall. But this is the truth, and this, this cheerful giving you should be glad God gave you something that you have enough to give. Amen. And recognize that, that he is the ultimate giver. We as his children are givers also. Mm -hmm. This is the nature of God. What if God was tight-handed with us? Yeah. We'd be in a world of hurt. Yes. And he can be tight-handed with a lot of stuff. We're not just talking about money here. He can be tight-handed tight with your breath yeah. if he wanted to be with your daily bread, with the things that he knows you have need of. So uh, also, a cheerful giver will be a content person. Yes. A person that can't give to the Lord is not content with what they have. Now, they can tell themselves whatever they want. They're not content with such things as they have. And also... A cheerful giver, God, not grudgingly of our of necessity. It isn't, oh, oh boy, just get a little bit of something and God wants some of it. That just sounds bad, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, like I said, yeah. what kind of a heart would withhold from the Lord? Instead of being cheerful, there were a couple of occasions in the scripture where the people had to be told, stop giving. Stop. We have, we have more than too much. Don't give any more. Well, we, are, we owe our whole lives. And there are times when God will let us uh, get into tight places. But remember like the, uh, the Macedonians. Yeah. They gave above their measure, their ability. Remember the Philippians, how that they didn't leave off uh, caring for the Apostle Paul. And what did he say? He said, not because I have need. I'm not glad for your gifts because I was in want, although it did minister to his want. God took care of him through the Philippians. He says, but because it's good for you, you'll, you'll never give God anything that, 
I mean, I think that the 10th and the 90th are, are kind of a good measure there. God gives you, gives you the 90 to keep whenever you, and you get, he, he's satisfied with the 10th. It's a token of the whole. It sanctifies the whole rest of it. And so I, I think in his um, returning to our heads, it wouldn't surprise me at all. It's me now, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if when you give to the Lord cheerfully, he doesn't have another 90 somewhere to, to like return to you. Because you're not going to be a better giver than God is. You can just try to be a good giver like he is. So this is a blessing. If a person can see this right, it is a blessing Amen. to be able to give to the Lord. We mentioned this a couple of weeks back, David saying, we thank you for accepting this and we've given you but your own. And yet he, he said God was so gracious to accept it. And so that's, that's the heart of a cheerful giver. God will accept something from me and he puts something in my hand that I can give, I can rejoice in bringing it and offering Amen. it to the Lord. Amen. And so, and God loves that. He, he, he looks at that, that person and he said, now there's someone who knows where he got that from. Mm -hmm. And there's a person who loves me because they're not going to just take and take and take and then say, but, but nothing for you. I'm not giving anything back. So who will lead us in that request that more professing Christians would experience being a purposeful and cheerful giver? Sister Sydney, Sister Ada. All right. Sister Annie, you'll read the uh, sermon text uh, for Brother Jason. And we're going to ask, um, we'll ask Brother Ricky, would you remember Brother Jason before he comes up? Thank you so much.